Yes, it may sound crazy, but this is how I made £41,228.29 from doing a smart home project without touching at all. And I've got evidence of the proposal of the invoice on, on this. Um, I've redacted some sensitive information, but I wanted to share this with you because opportunities arise when you, well, in my experience, when people put themselves out there, opportunities come to them. And this is a great example of, of an opportunity that just arises out, arised out of the blue. Yeah, I was lucky enough to capitalize on. When I say lucky, of course, there's some luck involved with these types of things, but you don't get lucky with these types of things unless you actually put yourself out there and make yourself available for these types of opportunities. So let me walk you through this project. So the name of this client was called Simon. I can I can give that much away. And this was a smart home, a Loxon smart home slash BMS project back in April 2022. As you can see, it was a bit of a while ago. And I can't remember exactly the details of how this project came to me and how how I was introduced to this client. I think it had partly something to do with these early videos on YouTube because it was around the same time about four years ago where I did three three videos talking about locks on lighting locks on heating and locks on security so I remember him specifically referencing these videos at one stage so that's what I mean like you put yourself out there you do things like this was really uncomfortable doing these initial three videos on youtube um they were pretty much all all scripted videos um with a teleprompter but this is what i mean like you put yourself out there you get uncomfortable opportunities come in my experience anyway it was definitely something to do with those youtube videos anyway this proposal this was a pro proposal to simon um, i'm not going to read you all of it and bore you with it you can pause the video if you really want to um, but yeah, this was like my old school style proposal template with some slight modifications, obviously, um, specifically for the client, locks on proposal template. Um, so yeah, full on smart home project, like it was a beefy old project looking at these floor plans. Um, you can see like very, very big, big project. I think this is the first floor this was the i think that was the that was this was the first floor or ground floor i don't know i don't know you can work it out um this was the basement though this was oh no did they have a basement where was the basement oh i don't know i can't remember it's too long ago anyway it was a it was a, it was a big project um and he wanted lighting Heating, security, multi-room audio, yeah, and I think that was it in terms of like general, general hardware. Anyway, um, this, as the story goes, having having conversations with Simon, um, I think it was between me and one other guy, and what happened was this was this was around so yeah i'd done the proposals i'd i'd basically asked him whether he was sort of in a position to move forward um he he was he wasn't fully committed at that point um i then highlighted this was at a point where loxon was putting their prices up by like 10 percent, and you know if if you did want to move forward I'd recommend like at least buying the hardware at this at this stage. I think the project it was still back and forth with the architect, so it wasn't completely finalised. It was probably I think at this stage six months away from um, the project starting. You know the build starting maybe a little bit sooner. But anyway, I said look, the Loxon are putting up their prices by ten percent. It might be worth 
investing in the hardware now to save you 10%, um, which, you know, he was he was committed to using locks on. By that point, he decided to, to go with me. And yeah, so he was like, yeah, that makes sense. Let's get the hardware now. And we, we sort out like the, this was the initial hardware. We sort out like all the, the little nitty gritty, gritty details later on. We sort out like labor and control panel stuff and other hardware later, but let's get the bulk, bulk of the locks on hardware ordered now to save that 10%. So that's, that's what we did. And let me give you a breakdown of all the locks on hardware. Um, yeah, so this was kind of like how the locks on hardware broke down. As you can see, m most of the, most of it came from lighting because he had a lot of, as you can see, locks on spots, um, RGB dimmers. So this is for LED strip. Anyway, cut a long story short, at least at this stage. Um, so I, I, he, he, so I, I put this proposal to him. I sent him an invoice, as you can see, it was that. And this is purely for the locks on hardware. I've got some notes down here. Um, yeah, yeah, here we go. So just for clarity, this proposal only includes the price of the locks on hardware. A separate pose proposal will be created for services such as documentation, drawing, control panel builds, on-site second fix and commissioning, etc. If you would like to use build automation for these services. So I wasn't assuming that he was gonna use me for these services as well later down the line um so this was just a proposal for the locks on hardware um payment terms 100 percent deposit so i sent him that proposal this was version two actually so i think we went back and forwards once so there's a revision one this is revision two um and he accepted it and with the, he made two payments. The first was, I think, like 20K, and then the other was like 21K. And yeah, so that was the end of this initial part of the story. So he settled that invoice. That was 41K in my bank, just over. Now, obviously, the hardware cost, I did obviously buy the hardware out of that. Um, but there's obviously a margin. This is the beauty. When you get into the controls, automation, smart home industry, manufacturers provide a trade discount and it ranges from Loxon is a bit shit, to be honest. And Loxon's low end is, I think, 17%. And the high end is like 25%. So it's within that. But some manufacturers, it can go as high as 50%. Um, I always decided when I went into business that I'm not going to be making anything less than a 25% margin. Um, I've got the costings breakdowns, but I'm not going to go through that, at least on this video. Um, and I can't remember exactly what margin I made on this. Going by that rule of thumb, um, I think what I made was was about 10K, 10K straight profit just from selling this hardware at this early stage. Maybe a little bit more. Let's skip forward a bit. So anyway, I, I, I bought this hardware, you know, money came into my bank. I didn't buy anything. I didn't, there was no outlay from my business until I actually received these funds. Once I received those funds, then I placed the order with locks on. Then the the lock because this house hadn't started being built yet, um, and it was nearer to my it was not really close, but it was nearer to where I was living compared to where Simon was living. He asked me to just store it for you know a few months. So I was like, yeah, no problem. So all the locks on hardware got sent to me, and I just stored it in my my loft or garage um, loft, I think it was, but for a few months, no problem. Um, 
things happened with the project. Simon changed his mind on various things. I think he got pissed off with the the architect, um, and things got set back, set back, and I think. Yeah, things went a bit quiet, and I was like, okay, well, I, I, I kept in contact with him, like, every month just to see how pro things were progressing, um, and then it just went quiet for a bit, and then about six months later, he kind of just reached out to me out of the blue, and I can't remember how the conversation went, but it was something along the lines of, yeah, look, we're, we're not... We're not doing that project anymore. Um, I've changed my mind on certain things. I don't know whether he just sold the plot or just didn't develop on it in the end, whatever, I can't remember. Um, and he was like, oh, can I can I come and collect the locks on hardware? I was like, um, yeah. And then, so I think the next week or so, he, he, he came over, I basically gave him all the locks on hardware um, and that was that. <laughs> and then I think a week after that, you know, I wasn't probing, I was just like, you know, you know, maybe as well, maybe he wanted the hardware. I didn't know at this stage, maybe he wanted the hardware back because he wanted to use someone else for like the, the installation, the, the panel building, the commissioning, the programming. I didn't really know at this stage. I didn't probe. I was just, you know, I was just like, you know, it's, it's your choice. You know, I didn't, but that wasn't assumed. That wasn't said, but that was a possibility. Um, so yeah, he came and collected the hardware. No problem. It was his ultimately. And then I think maybe two weeks, three weeks, maybe four weeks later, he calls me again and said, basically asking, do I want to buy this hardware back off him? And I didn't need any additional hardware. So I was like, no, great not, but I can, you know, I can put a shout out for you. And I think, I can't remember too long ago, but I think, as I mentioned, things just, the project just stopped. Um, and he was now obviously trying to offload this hardware. Um, and that, that was kind of it. That's kind of the end of the story. But I just wanted to share this with you because opportunities, and going back to the original point, opportunities arise when you put yourself out there, even though it's uncomfortable. So like, the, the, the kind of like journey that I went through was was obviously firstly learning the technical skill sets, learning locks on, being in a position to actually help this client, Simon, help him with the specification. Because there was a bit of back and forth doing the specifying, the design, etc. To then get to a point where, yes, this is the hardware that we need to for this level of functionality in in this home home BMS project that that you're doing, and that's that's obviously uncomfortable. You know, going through that process, learning things for the first time, going back to square one, not being an expert, like having, and it's just it's just not very comfortable, you know. But it's necessary to get to other places in life, in career, in business, and it's what I'm learning is if you just continually want to grow and get to the next stage you're constantly going back to this state. Like as soon as you're comfortable, then you know you're not growing. And what for me now, that feeling of flatlining, that that induces more anxiety with me now than than the stress of growth. Because at least I know that that stress and anxiety you feel when you're growing and you're doing things for the first time, at least I'm growing. Like I'd much rather be stressed and growing and developing and progressing than being stressed from knowing that I'm not. And I, sh I, you know, depending on your personality type and what you want to do in life, like if you're, if you're happy as you are, you know, not growing, just that's absolutely fine, you know, but that doesn't make me happy. And I think that's why for a long time I suffered from anxiety and mental health and, and con confidence and things like that. And it took me a long time to realize that, and I was masking these these emotions, these feelings with like computer games and drinking and, and other things and just just trying to run away from that feeling and mask it. So anyway, going off on a bit of a tangent there. But from, so that was the first thing, having the te technical skill set <clears throat> and going through all of that. But then the second thing is like getting uncomfortable with those those first YouTube videos. And that that was a key part that played into winning this project, I feel, because he specifically referenced those and specifically said how well I'd detailed out how the locks on lighting works, how the heating works, how the 
security works and he could understand how that might work in this home and usually what you would do is you would you would take a client to the the manufacturer showroom so in this case you'd take them to like the locks on showroom and they would be able they would be able to experience it but i gave him that experience through the videos that i'd produced and again that's that wasn't comfortable that wasn't a nice feeling like even doing this now like it's i'm i'm <laughs> you can see I fumble my words I'm not I mean I'm I'm aware of that like I and then I get self-conscious about that but I'm a lot better than I were, was at doing these videos but I still don't really particularly like them but it's kind it's I'd rather be doing other things but this helps a business and it helps other people so I kind of like there's part of it that I do like like I do like sharing information but I still feel that anxiety that that uncomfortability if that's a word doing this thing uh, doing this and it gets less over time but it's still there but yeah the point i'm making is put yourself out there um do things that are uncomfortable because opportunities come your way you know and some opportunities like this you know where you basically over 10k straight profit margin from doing very minimal work you know, and I was prepared to do more work, but I would have got paid more for doing more work. But just from just from this, just from selling the hardware, I made over 10K straight profit. But that was from putting myself out there. This also highlights just what an incredibly lucrative the industry this can be. And it demonstrates how much money you can make. You know, it's not crazy amounts of money, but it's it's a lot better than being in some other industries. And if you can just sell, you know, let's just say, let's keep it real small and simple, one man band, like five to 10 projects a year, this type of project. And I mean, this was a big project, but I've sell, there's smaller projects as well. But like just from selling the hardware, you know, doing five projects a year, you can make a straight 50K. And that's no, not charging anything for your time. Um, there was a bit of back and forth here with, with designs and whatnot, but it just demonstrates the opportunities that are out there. And I want to encourage other people to get a little bit uncomfortable, but put themselves in this industry if they want to go that route, because there's opportunities there. Anyway. See you later.